A head injury can happen in the blink of an eye, but what happens next can mean the difference between life and death. Welcome to Treatment Algorithms. Today, we'll walk through the essential steps of head injury assessment and treatment from the first response to advanced interventions in the ICU. Whether you're in pre-hospital care or working in the emergency department, understanding this process is critical. Let's dive in. When assessing a head injury, the first step is to evaluate the patient's level of consciousness. You can use either the Glasgow Coma Scale or the AVPU Scale, alert, verbal, pain or unresponsive, to get a quick snapshot of the brain function. Next is to check vital sign, which include pulse, blood pressure, respiratory rate and oxygen saturation. It is also important to watch for signs of increased intracranial pressure such as headache, vomiting, confusion and pupillary dilation. Head injuries are classified into three categories based on the Glasgow Coma Scale. A mild head injury shows the GCS of 14 to 15 with no loss of consciousness. A moderate injury with GCS of 9 to 13 with loss of consciousness for less than 24 hours and a severe head injury with GCS of 3 to 8 and loss of consciousness for more than 24 hours. Let's talk about what happens before the patient even reaches the hospital. In pre-hospital care, first, we stabilize the cervical spine to prevent further injury. Next, secure the airway and administer oxygen. Finally, transport the patient to a trauma center as quickly as possible. Once the patient reaches the emergency department, continuously monitor their vital signs and repeat the GCS assessment to track any changes in their condition. Imaging is crucial. Start with a non-contrast CT scan and if the patient is stable, an MRI can provide more detailed information. For treatment, you can administer 1. Analgesics for pain management 2. Anti-seizure prophylaxis Loading doses of levetiracetam, typically 1 gram IV of phenytoin for patients at high risk of seizures, especially with moderate to severe head injuries. Number 3. We can give steroids for edema. Number 4. We need to control the intracranial pressure. For that, we can use A. Manitol. Administer 0.25 to 1 gram per kg. IV bolus to reduce ICP. B. Hypertonic saline. Consider 3% saline as an alternative. Typically 5 to 10 milliliters IV bolus if mannitol is contraindicated or not available. Number 5. Antiemetics like onlinsetron 4 to 8 milligram IV or orally can be given if nausea and vomiting are present. Now, what if the imaging shows a more serious issue? In cases of increased intracranial pressure, mass lesions like hematomas, contusions or cerebral edema, neurosurgical intervention may be needed. There are a few procedures you can opt for, which include first, craniotomy, second, a decompressive craniectomy, third, inserting an external ventricular drain to relieve pressure. If the patient is transferred to the ICU, the focus shifts to close monitoring and managing the brain's blood supply. You can keep a close eye on intracranial pressure, maintain cerebral perfusion pressure to ensure adequate blood flow to the brain and control the carbon dioxide and oxygen level while carefully managing fluids and electrolytes to prevent complications. Head injuries can come with a number of complications. Here's how to handle them. During seizures, anti-seizure medications and continuous EEG monitoring can help manage this risk. In hydrocephalus, if excess fluid builds up, options include placing an external ventricular drain or performing a shunt procedure. And in vasospasm, medications like nimodipine or transcranial Doppler monitoring can help manage blood vessel constriction. For severe head injuries, Patients will need to be admitted to the ICU and monitored closely for at least 24 hours. If they are stable, they can eventually be discharged with a follow-up appointment to track the recovery. And that's how head injuries are assessed and treated, from the moment they happen to the ICU and beyond. 
I hope this video helped you understand the critical steps involved in managing these cases. If you found it useful, make sure to like and subscribe for more detailed medical content. See you in the next one.